Hi everyone! So today's video is all about making your elevation drawings just look a little bit more polished and presentation ready. So we're taking some AutoCAD drawings and really making them pop in Photoshop. <laughs> So first things first, we want to clean up the, the base drawing. And basically what I'm going to do with this is actually just go, let's zoom in a little. And these are actually the cut cabinets. And just for clarity, I'm going to actually erase these. So we only want the full like interior of the, the drawing to show. So I'll also kind of remove this corner here too. So I'm just gonna do this with my eraser block just because I find it's really easy. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Just to get rid of these lines. All right, so now once we have the, the drawings cleaned up, we're gonna go through and add a couple of different uh, materials that we know we need to include within the overall um, kind of set of drawings. So first of all, I'm gonna go and add in the counter or the worktop um, texture. So I'm actually using this uh, blue terrazzo. So I've opened this up and it's a seamless texture. So what I'm gonna do is actually make it into a pattern in Photoshop. So edit, define pattern, and I would probably wanna give it a, a real name. And then all it is is gonna be a pattern that we then apply. So first of all, I'm gonna go through and select all the areas that I need this particular material to be applied. So we know, so we know so I'm going to use the magic wand and we're going to select all the parts of the worktop. So I'm holding down the shift key to select more than one. And I think that's all fine. And with that, we have all the parts of the workshop work top selected and I'm going to actually do a new layer and we're going to fill this layer with just any color. So we filled it in. All right. So now that this layer has a color applied to it, to apply our terrazzo texture, all we need to do is go to the layer, effects, pattern overlay, and we're gonna choose the terrazzo that we just brought in. Now it looks really big for this size drawing, so we're gonna make it a lot smaller. Something like that. And if I zoom in a little, we can see that texture has added and it looks pretty good actually for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for a couple of other textures on the, the drawing. So for example, we're going to actually need to make sure the, the plinth or the toe kick is all kind of applied to a particular color. These shelves have a particular um, timber texture applied to them, um, as well as the, um, the refrigerator and things like that. So before we get into the, the walls and other elements, we're going to go through and add a few more textures using that same process of selecting and then uh, applying a pattern. Now, for this view, 
The stainless steel on the um, extractor fan in the refrigerator shouldn't be the same kind of level of intensity as the one we have over here because it's a bit further away. So for this one, what we're going to do is the same process, but we're going to actually bump down the opacity of the pattern overlay. So in that case, what I'm going to do is go in with my magic wand and select the textures I need to apply, create a new layer, and we're actually going to just paint this layer white. So with my paint bucket, drop the white um, color on it. And so we can't really see that there's anything there, but it will be there when we apply our effects. So pattern overlay, it's there. And this time we're bumping down that opacity just so it's a lot lighter. And it helps us communicate that level of depth in a 2D drawing. Uh, similarly, we want to do that for the, the toe kick here. All right, so we've applied a number of different textures, and now we're going to actually go in and just apply um, a few colors and really play around with how these are going to look in the, the space. So first things first, I'm going to go back to my layer one, which I should probably give this a name. <laughs> And I definitely recommend naming your, your layers as you go, just because it becomes much more complicated later on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go into this one and we're going to apply some colors. So first of all, we've pulled in our color palette here and what I'm going to actually do is save these as swatches that we can use later on. So with my um, eyedropper tool, I'm going to save all of these as swatches right here that we can use as we move along. So now that I'm here, what I'm gonna do is select the wall area of the drawing and create a new layer and pull in that wall color and apply it. And now I'm going to do that for all the wall colors. So go to the base. So go to the base drawing, select the wall here, select the wall there. And I think that's actually it for right now. And go back to this wall paint layer and apply that color. All right, now we're going to go in and add the same um, kind of just with color, add in our kind of light blue for the cabinets. All right, so now we're going to add in colors at the tile. All right, so now that we've added the tile, we're gonna to need to do the same thing that we had done on the um, stainless and the uh, toe kick and do the kind of faded out version of the tile and the wall here.
All right, so now that we've applied most of the textures, I'm going to just go in and add in textures on the, the remaining areas just so we can make sure everything is covered. All right, now that we've added most of the textures, we're gonna do a couple of things just to make it a little bit more um, with depth, not so flat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just go back to the cabinets, make sure I've chosen the correct ones. And we're gonna go to effects and we're gonna do a couple of um, ways of thinking about it. So we're gonna do an inner shadow first. And obviously that's a little too, that doesn't look that bad. I'm going to do at an angle just so we give ourselves a little bit more depth. So I've just added, adjusted these things here and we can already start to see that there's a little bit more depth to the cabinet. So okay. And now I want to add in a bevel and emboss. So this one is going to be just quite small. All right, so we've added in a little bit of depth here, and now I'm gonna do the same thing for, let's do the walnut. I'm gonna add a inner shadow. And this time, going straight up, it's dropping all the way down. Perfect. And let's do the same thing for Actually, let's just leave that there as is, because actually I think that's working fairly well. And so really quickly, we were able to get go in and add just a little bit of depth to the, the main part of the, the design. Now, the last thing I want to do is add in a little bit more detail to the tile. So if I go into that tile layer, and we're gonna add in a bevel and emboss again. And this time we just wanna make sure it's just a little bit perfect. So I've just added it at this 57 seven degree angle. And so we just have a little bit of depth to the tile. And yeah, I think I'm okay with all that. And because it's all in one layer, it's actually applied that everywhere, which is really great and makes our, our lives a lot easier. So basically, now I'm gonna go in and do that to a couple of other places and we'll show how we can then add in final effects. All right, so now we wanna do um, a few final effects just to make sure it's gonna look as polished as possible. So first things first, I'm actually gonna select all of my layers, group them, and then duplicate that group. Because what we're gonna do is make one group invisible, and then I'm gonna merge the other group so we are making just a flattened version of everything. And this is gonna make it where we can really hone in and use our dodge and burn tool to, to really make sure we're getting as many highlights and lowlights as we need. So I'm gonna go start on this one and I'm gonna actually select the whole thing. And then with my magic wand tool, Then with my magic wand tool, deselect this. So the only thing we have selected is what's inside the drawing. So now what I'm gonna do is go with my dodge and burn tool. So first of all, I'm gonna use the dodge tool because it's gonna be what's gonna darken things. So 
just by default, the upper part of a wall is always going to be a little bit darker unless there's some type of up lighting just because of the way light falls in a space. So what I'm going to do, oops, burn tool, is burn this upper edge. So just adding a little bit of shading there. And I'm going to do the same thing underneath the shelves. And then also I'm going to do the same thing in lines across our window treatments, similarly on the window itself. All right, now I'm going to do just the corner itself. little bit below the window there and yeah I think I'm actually okay with all that so yeah I mean really quickly we're able to add a lot more depth by just kind of using what we've already drawn and making it have a little bit more variety according to just how light would fall in the space And we're going to do the same thing over here. And there we have it. So within about less than a half hour, we're able to add in just a little bit of texture and a little bit of color to these 2D drawings. So they just start to look a little bit more like the design is intended. So I hope that helps. If you liked that video, check these out and click to subscribe where you'll be the first to see new videos I release every Monday. Thanks for watching.